All right, guys, and welcome to another video. In this video, I will be showing you how to improve your FPS or optimize your FPS so you can get a more smooth gaming experience without necessarily decreasing the uh, detail and the quality of the gameplay. Uh, we'll go over the interface and add-ons that you might want to swap out. Uh, settings in game and we'll go into some uh, overclocking uh, because those things can help you a lot in terms of frame rates if they aren't optimized correctly so let's dive right in and get started with some in-game settings all right guys here we are in the game we are going to dive into some settings here in a little bit but first if you like and enjoy the video and you like the tips that i have provided you with don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button, checking out and ring the bell. It gives you better FPS. It has told me that. It will also give you better FPS. Also check out the live stream over on twitch.tv slash killerchris. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. All right, guys, here, let's check out some settings. All right, let's go into system. I'm going to press escape. System. Graphics. All right. Display mode. Full screen and windowed is up to you. You'll have the little taskbar below and windowed around if you choose windowed. I prefer full screen. Window size, you want to keep this to the same resolution as your primary monitor. Resolution scale. This one here is should never be below or above 100%. Always keep this at 100%. Monitor, primary. If you have multiple monitors, you can change it. It just changes one monitor. The screen is on. You can see I have primary and monitor one. Exact same thing. And the aliasing. I have this one here set to uh, quite high right now. And what it does, it smoothens out edges around objects. So we can see here if we go over here. So pay attention here around this uh, ledger. When I turn this off, so none apply. That is the difference uh, in this AA does. So these here are a bit jagged now, and it is quite heavy on your graphics card with the uh, anti-aliasing. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to, personally, because I have a quite beefy graphics card and it doesn't really impact my frame rates that much because my GPU is so much more powerful than my CPU, that I crank this up to the max. Vertical sync, I have this disabled because it locks the uh, fraction, it locks a, your frame rate to a fraction of your monitor's frame rate. So if you have a 60 FPS monitor, then your game will run at 60 FPS, always. Which my capture card is, my capture card is 60 frames per second, which means I won't be able to use my 144 hertz if I have this enabled because it will lock it to the 60 FPS of the capture card. So, uh, I, therefore, I have this disabled. Another thing um, you can do is to turn this on. It should give you a more smooth gameplay. Uh, and if, as long as you have like enough frame rates to keep up with it. All right, texture resolution. I prefer this one here to set to high because it really, really impacts the gameplay. Take a look at all the textures here and everything when I turn this to low. Boom. Now everything looks like a mess. Uh, so then we can turn this up again. Let's quickly get away from this. This here doesn't impact performance super much. I really, really recommend having this here too high. Um, it just gives you so much extra eye candy for the performance hit. So set texture resolutions to high. Texture filtering. Increases the texture sharpness, particularly for textures viewed at an angle, decrease to improve performance. Again, if you decrease this a little bit, this might increase your performance quite a bit, uh, especially for your GPU. Uh, also for a little bit for your CPU, this here could help out. Projected textures, you always want this enabled. Uh, so uh, the description here is enables pr the projection of textures to environment disabling this may greatly improve performance keep it on if this is a absolute necessity for pvp you could disable this for arenas you could disable this for raids this is a must because certain raid mechanics you won't be able to see without this enabled 
The falling tentacles uh, on Carapace of Nesov. The shadow that is marking where it's going to land. That is a projected texture. So keep this on. Viewing distance. Um, this is quite heavy on CPU memory. Um, because it has to like calculate where everything is. And stuff. But it allows you to see a great far. So if you don't have super fast processors. You can turn this down. Environmental detail. Again, this is also a little bit on the CPU. This doesn't do super much. Same with ground clutter. These are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, shadow quality. It is the quality of the shadows. Those are pretty high hitting on the uh, on the CPU and GPU. So if you want like really good uh, frame rate, you can turn this down. Liquid detail. Again. Uh, I crank this up to the max because I really, really like uh, the liquid. Again, it doesn't really matter super much unless you have water in the frame. So for most raid bosses, this won't affect anything. Sun shafts are pretty heavy hitting. Again, you can turn this down here, especially if you're struggling for FPS. It doesn't really matter super much. Uh, they look pretty. Particle density. So that is the uh, density of particles, so your thrust bolts and everything else. If your graphics card and your CPU needs a break, you can turn this down. Uh, so we have these flames here on enchants. Those are pretty common particles. Uh, some weapons also have particles. So if we go into system, we take particle density, set it to low, apply. Now you can see now there is a lot less flames around my daggers. Sorry, the UI is in the way here. There we go. And a lot less knives in my fan of knives. So stuff like that can really improve your frame rate as well. Um, I like particles. Uh, I, I do a lot of streaming and I like to keep the quality up. So uh, if you can, I would recommend having particles up as high as possible. And again, it is something that improve the performance quite a bit. SSAO. Render quality of lighting effects. Decreasing may greatly improve performance. Well, let's try and decrease it and see how it looks. Uh, let's just have it disabled. All right. So now we can see uh, everything looks a lot more muddy and a lot more lighting around. Uh, ultra. You can see the shadows are a lot better. So this is kind of like shadow quality as well. Um, and it's advanced. It's advanced lighting effects. It's um, not super necessarily for having a great uh, looking game and a great gaming experience. However, it looks really, really nice. How does it look at low? Wow. So basically, if you have disabled, it really shows just low is like enough to make it look nice. What is the difference between low and ultra? All right, so this here area over here changed quite a lot on the left side of the screen. So let's have a look at that. So now we're going to go from low to ultra. There was barely any change. You know what? I'm actually going to have this at low. <laughs> depth effect. Controls the rendering of depth based particle effects. Decreasing this may improve performance. So this is something that is going to hurt your CPU quite a lot. So and then it's a refraction of like particles and stuff like in lights and waters. And it's pretty neat. I would say I like it again. If this is not something that is super needed to have to have like a great gaming experience as much as particle density and uh, texture resolution is. So I would like personally again i can so i keep it high but if you are struggling i would recommend turning this down a bit always try and find a middle ground where you can turn it down like if you turn it disabled uh low is going to be like leaps forward from disabled outline mode is how you see like things around effects so like when there's loot on the corpse and stuff like that um Let's head into the advanced section because here is where it gets a little bit different. 
Triple buffering. Uh, buffers small frame rates in the CPU. Uh, of your <laughs> buffers more frame rates, so it buffers triple the frames instead of double the frames, which uh, will smooth out your frame rates a lot. Uh, if you um, turn off this, you may uh, increase uh, or decrease input lag if you have a slow GPU. So if you have a fast GPU, I recommend having this enabled if uh, you are starting to experience input lag, like your mouse presses and button presses on time right, you feel like they are delayed. You definitely want to turn this off. Multi-sample anti-aliasing. So if you're running anti-aliasing here, you can change MSAA multi-sample. Um, it's just like how good you want it. And this is very impactful of your of your DPU and basically doesn't change a thing. Post-processor AA. Again, more anti-aliasing. Doesn't do a single thing that is noticeable. Let's turn this all the way up. Basically, no difference. Turn it off. It's going to give you the best one. If you're using render scale, don't use render scale. It's going to kill your frame rate and it's not going to look that much better. Graphics API. This is so important. Graphics API. If you are running on a graphics card that is older than 10th generation Pascal graphics cards from NVIDIA, you want to use DX11. If you're running on Pascal or higher, so during RTX 1080 Ti's, 1060, 1070, whatever, 2070, you want to use DirectX 12. If you're running on 980, 980 Ti, 960, 970, 760, 780, 780 Ti's, stuff like that. Maxwell Titan X or Titans below them, you want to use DirectX 11. Stay away from DirectX Legacy. Um, Legacy is not supporting the new multi-core CPU usage of World of Warcraft. I don't want to use them. UI scale, that is pretty much the size of your UI. Um, so if you turn this up, it's going to be a lot larger. If you turn it down, it's going to be a lot smaller. Graphics card, I usually don't use auto detect because I don't want any sudden, hey, we screwed up and we couldn't find your graphics card. Just set it to use your uh, main graphics card. There should be only one here. If you have integrated graphics, make sure you set it to your graphics card. All right. And that concludes it. What is uh, going on here for the things you might want to know about the uh, interface and stuff. I'll uh, go over some uh, add-ons and Uyghurs and stuff that you might want to stay away from if you're using them. Uh, especially if you're an old school player and download a lot of uh, old add-ons that may impact your performance quite a lot. So let's head to it. All right, guys, add-ons. Add-ons you want to stay away from. And uh, we can we can open up the add-on here. Um, so you can see I have a lot of stuff here turned off. Um, there's some stuff that is really easy and then doesn't take much. Recount. Never ever use recount. It will kill your CPU. The reason for that is that it uses a very old way of like recording data and it's just gonna wreck your cpu uh scatter is i use scatter i haven't bothered switching to details yet why i don't know um but scatter is a lot better in collecting data it is not as good as details if you want better fps go ahead and download details in fact i'm gonna go and get details after this video is done because it is much better. Um, Trade Skill Master again. Combat based uh, stuff. Uh, if you are running a bucket load of boss mods and Uyghurs. Uyghurs is uh, a really nice thing to have. They can be super helpful. Problem with Uyghurs is anyone can make a Uyghur. Anyone can program a code of Uyghur. Uh, so if you know Uyghurs here. Uh, we can take something here. Uh, a rogue anguish circle thingy. 
So it's a circle that when we get Evoke Anguish on Mythic Nassaf. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is the code? Can't I see the code somewhere? Either way. There's a lot of stuff here that can be um, set. Uh, trigger. So we have a trigger here. And a bit of code. Again, code can be programmed really poorly. If it is programmed super poorly, it will sort of like loop itself and do unnecessary things and take up unnecessary CPU cycles. Therefore, be careful with Uyghurs if you're importing a Uyghur and your frame rate dips to the crap or if you're having frame rate issues, try and start over with your Uyghurs. That is a really good option. Like, oh, let's see if I can come up with an example here. Let's say a um, Uyghur is uh, a Uyghur that checks for, hey, can I execute? Can I execute the bus? Say, hey, all right, I check my buffs first. Do I have an execute prog? And it just does that. It loops through all of the bus, say, okay, is this buff an execute? No. 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 It's a really, really slow and inefficient way that it has to, your CPU has to run through that all the time to check if there is an execute buff. So that might be something that could slow down your CPU quite a lot. I would check like, hey, um, here is a boss that has less than 20% health. You can execute. Um, there's other ways, a lot of other things. Instead of that, it can check like, hey, you got a new buff. Every time you got a new buff, instead of just keep checking, is that buffs available? Checking the buffs that you have. You say, okay, you got a new buff. All right, isn't execute? No, okay. You got a new buff, isn't execute? No, okay. That's a lot more efficient because it doesn't have to run through that script super much. Super nerdy talk, I know. And now you have a bit of understanding through how Uyghurs might slow down your CPU quite a lot. And that is pretty much it. Stay away from me, count. <laughs> Stay away from me, count. And scatter for that matter. I'm gonna get rid of it. Uh, there might be some light versions of uh, DPS meters. If you just want a DPS meter as a rate leader, I need to know what's going on in the raid and why we are failing and why we, what we can improve and stuff like that. Uh, there might also be bus uh, regards that can be quite heavy on the CPU. So, uh, like... Let's say, okay, everyone gets a Evoke Anguish. Everyone gets this, uh, like, Paranoia debuff. And then you have to pair them up together and you have to, like, assign where they need to move. And that's a lot of stuff going on in a very short amount of time that can really easily be enough for your CPU to go, Ugh! no frame rates. Try and avoid those. Try to find another solution if you can. Like, a we got that shows you how long you have until to your placement. If that makes you lag out for three seconds every time it shows up, it's not worth. Try and find a better one. Uh, VA.ovac.io uh, has a lot of uh, things uh, where you can find Vigoros. Try to find some good ones. Alright guys, this is going to conclude add-ons and Vigoros. Um, now I'm going to take a look at how you can identify your issue where you are lagging uh, what might you want what you might want to upgrade what you can do to improve your hardware uh one thing uh, i want to say here before we end the uh Uyghurra add on segment if you're having cpu issues Uyghurs and add-ons is usually where you can optimize it the most you can also overclock your cpus that is a bit more technical we are not going to go into cpu overclocking for a video on how you can improve your FPS. There's plenty of overclocking guides. Um, so I recommend Jace Two Cents and Linus Tech Tips if you want a place to find overclocking and stuff like that. We might do an overclocking vlog sometime soon. Um, but yeah, for now we are gonna go ahead and take a look at graphics card overclocking and diagnostics. Alrighty guys here. I have fired up MSI Afterburner. It is the overclocking utility. It is amazing. It is 
Perfect. And it's probably pr pretty much the best tires. You can use a lot of overclocking utilities. I really prefer MSI Afterburner, and it's really, really nice. So we can detach here if we want some more uh, stuff. One thing is, if you can play the game and still have these up at the same time, so if you want to check, hey, what the hell is going on, you can make this a bit smaller, scroll down to the window you want to check for, and then you can still keep playing the game. Woohoo, I'm doing things. And my CPU temperature is going like a bit all over the place. CPU usage is jumping a bit all over the place. So it's depending on what it needs to calculate and stuff like that. There we go. Um, and here we can see CPU usage, GPU temperature, GPU usage. If GPU usage is low, you can up your quality of some of the in-game things. Uh, I would say CPU is likely going to be the uh, culprit for your FPS issues of your of World of Warcraft. But let's take a look at the GPU overclocking settings here. Um, again, World of Warcraft users used to be very, very single thread performance. You can see here, we are having like a bit of usage on most threads, and then we have one that has a lot of usage. It's usually the last thread for me. And uh, we have uh, our GPU um, sources up here, where we can check uh, pretty much anything. There's core voltage, power limit, temp limiter. Take these and crank them all the way up to the max. If your CPU is having a decent cooler or is water cooled, crank these up to the max. If it's a low end card, I would recommend maybe not cranking them up to the max, but give them a little bit more. See how the temperatures look and how the fans noises. If it's something that is a-okay with you, I would recommend staying below like 70 80 degrees that's like the max you should go for and then you can start adjusting the core clock and memory clock start increasing it little by little do not press the startup button until you have a sweet spot where you're not crashing don't worry guys it's not going to break your graphics card you can uh, turn this up all the way and it's just going to go into a blue or green screen and say that eh, doesn't work or with some graphics card they go into like a little leg spike and then they just Plug themselves back and say, that did not work. We go back and we stay here at our stock settings. If you are in stock settings, you want to just click this one here again. And then it should apply it once more. But turn it down a bit. So I can go in here. You can also just type in here. Let's see if we want to turn on. Log on. 200 megahertz overclock. Oh, boom. And now I've got a little bit more graphics card performance. If your graphics card is holding behind uh, World of Warcraft, in World of Warcraft you can do this. That's a good way to get a bit more performance. Alright guys, I think this is going to be it for this video here. Once again, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash killerchris. I'll, I'm streaming there quite a lot. We are doing a lot of raids and Mythic Plus with you guys. Uh, having a lot of good fun. So come and join the shenanigans. Get some loot. Kill some bosses. Um, yeah, check out the links to my social media below if you want to get in touch with me either on the Discord server or the Twitter or the live stream is probably the best ways to go around it. I try to keep up with the uh, comments on the videos, but there is quite a lot here these days um, since we are growing quite a bit, so that's very nice. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.